There's a reason why Linux is using GPLv2, not GPLv2 or later, not GPLv3. The reason for this is Linus Torvalds does not like GPLv3, and one of his main concerns was around the restriction of something known as TVization. And you'll hear this term thrown around by FOSS people every so often, and you'll hear that it's one of the main reasons why GPLv3 was created. But what is TVization? So to understand that, we first need to talk about TiVo, because TiVoization is a reference to the practices performed by TiVo in the early 2000s, and it's very easy to have forgotten that TiVo ever existed, formed in the late 90s, and even till today, continue to operate. I don't know anybody who owns a TiVo device, but they are still making things. But their main claim to fame were DVRs, digital video recorders, for capturing TV and watching it later. Oh, how times have changed. So what TiVo did was very simple. They have this digital device, and it needs some form of software to run on it. So why don't we use Linux and some of the tools associated with Linux? And that's exactly what they did. So they made use of this GPL license code, which at the time, and in some cases still is, GPLv2, and then any of the changes they made to make things actually function with their specific hardware, they sent back up, conforming perfectly to the license. And even till today, you can still get copies of the TiVo code. Now, the way they share it isn't in the most um, convenient fashion. They don't just have like a GitHub that anybody can go and download from, but you can get the code from them and they will give it to you. This is not one of those many times where a company is using GPL code and then making changes to it, refusing to send things back, or straight up pretending like they're not using it in the first place. TiVo was doing everything they needed to do, but they did notice something extra they can do. So they noticed what the FSF saw as a loophole with the license. So in the early versions of TiVo, it was basically a glorified Linux computer. You could go and take that version of Linux off and stick anything else you wanted on it, or you could just leave that version of Linux on there and start to modify it. You could do anything you wanted with it. But that's not really great for profits. That's not going to get people to go and buy the new version of TiVo. So what if what you did was you keep using this GPL code, but you make a lockdown system. So if the user tries to modify the code, you have a DRM system there stopping the system from functioning. This is exactly what TiVo did, and from my understanding, are still doing up until this day. And this is a practice you see fairly commonly in things like, say, the phone market, where you have these lockdown bootloaders where you can't go and change out that core ROM, otherwise the system isn't going to function. Now, I don't like DRM as much as the next guy, but if we're talking purely in terms of the GPLv2 and what TiVo did, they were still complying with the terms of the license. But Stallman still didn't really like this and referred to devices like this as tyrant devices and proprietary tyrants, feeling like even though this is conforming to the license, it goes against the intention and spirit of the GPL. And this is one of the primary reasons why in 2006, the FSF drafted GPLv3. But initially, the Linux kernel devs were kind of concerned that it would stop legitimate DRM use cases. Now, that's probably sent sirens off in your head, but there is a reason for that. So in later third and fourth drafts, a clause was changed to exclude certain business use cases. For example, things like voting machines and medical devices. This isn't a matter of a moral good that these things are open. In many regions, they legally cannot be. But even with those changes, some projects like BusyBox were still kind of concerned about GPL v3, leading to them dropping the or later clause. So or later in a GPL style license basically means that version of GPL or any newer versions going into the future. So GPL v3, or maybe a future GPL v4, GPL v5, so on and so forth. And in more recent years, I've seen some people worried about the or later clause as well, because it puts a lot of faith into the FSF, and you sort of have to assume that in a future version, they're not going to add a clause that you don't like, because 
if they do, now it suddenly applies even though that wasn't what you were intending to have there. Now, in case you don't know, BusyBox is another implementation of the Unix core utils. So things like LS, CD, all other things that you'd expect to be there on a Unix-like system. And while they didn't need to drop the or later clause, because they stuck with GPL v2, this is one of the major reasons why when you see a car running Linux, it's also probably using BusyBox as well. Sure, some companies are just going to ignore the license and ship the GNU tools instead, but anyone who doesn't want the terrible PR from that and doesn't want to potentially get sued probably isn't going to do that. Now, as for Torvalds, some of you may not know this, but he's never really been a hardcore free software guy. There have been many points throughout history where he's butted heads with the FSF, and if anything, he's more in line with the open source crowd, and stopping TVization was never really a consideration while developing Linux. While he's not a fan of the practice and would much prefer things to be running on open hardware that anybody can go and modify the software on, it's not something he really cares that much to stop. Because the way the hardware is designed is up to the hardware designers. And the Linux kernel didn't always use GPL v2. The reason he used it is the original license he had wasn't exactly great. It had a clause limiting the sale of the kernel, which while he was a young university student seemed like a good idea because, you know, you're a young university student, you don't have that much money, you kind of want to do things like that. But when GPL v2 came along, he felt it was a perfect license. He makes the software and then you do anything you want with it. And if you make any of the changes public, then you must give them back. That's great. And he felt like TVization was an overreach of the GPL, and it should have been a whole new license. And at the time, relicensing Linux was certainly doable, if not exactly a productive use of time. Nowadays, though, while still theoretically possible, it's practically impossible because you need to get every single contributor who has code in the kernel to sign off on this happening and considering the length the project has been around not all of those developers are still alive so the ownership of that code then falls onto the estate and you have to find out who you need to contact and many of those people even if you can get in contact with the estate will have no idea what you're talking about I'm sure we can all understand what Storm was trying to do. He wanted to make it so that if anyone wanted to use this amazing software, they would have to make their hardware more open. And that's a great goal. But Linus was looking at it from a more realistic perspective, where you wouldn't see the hardware going open because alternatives exist. And Android would still exist. Car computers would still exist. But they'd be based on a BSD variant instead. And if you want to hear more about this problem from the man himself, I'll leave a link to a clip from a talk he did in 2014 in the description down below. For now, though, I'll give you a brief look. Do you agree that you undermine GPL version 3? And how can yes. we get you to stop? What? How can we get you to stop? Oh, I hate GPL version 3. That should be enough of a reason for you to go and watch it. So let me know. Do you think these lockdown devices are that big of a deal or are you more in line with Linus, for example, and you make software, you don't make hardware, you just put it out there. If people want to use it, go and use it. That's the extent of our relationship. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, subscribe, and verify linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays. That's going to be it for me. and. I'm out.